A man who is ruthless and cunning combines experience with almost reckless daring. At first sight, he seemed more gentleman than pirate. Though his bearded face was lined and weathered, and the whites of his eyes were more yellow than white, he wore a fine feathered hat and a long black dress coat. At his worst, he was cruel, manipulative, and bloodthirsty. He could be merciless and often turned agreements to his own favor, but nevertheless, he stated that he had a merciful nature and a sense of fair play, though this was possibly only an example of his morbid sense of humor. In this video, I'll discuss a man introduced two decades ago in The Curse of the Black Pearl. He began as the villainous and cruel cursed captain of the Black Pearl. Over time, he evolved into a righteous freedom fighter, dedicated to creating a world where all pirates could navigate freely. Later he became a British Navy privateer seeking revenge against Blackbeard, and eventually, a successful captain commanding a fleet of pirate vessels. I feel nothing. Not the wind on my face, nor the spray of the sea. Nor the warmth of a woman's flesh. You best start believing in ghost stories, Miss Turner. You're in one. Not much is known about Hector Barbosa's early adventures, except that he became a capable pirate. In his early 40s, Barbosa was the captain of a small pirate schooner named Cobra. After Barbosa's ship was destroyed, the former Russian pirate lord of the Caspian Sea, Borya Palachnik, gave him his most precious token as an apology, a small block of wood, his piece of eight, the sign of pirate lordship. This gesture marked Barbossa as the next pirate lord of the Caspian Sea. He was the first mate of Captain Jack Sparrow, who, upon discovering the location of cursed Aztec gold, staged a mutiny against Jack. Marooning Jack on an island, Barboza and the crew of the Black Pearl found the gold, but their actions triggered a curse, turning them into undead skeletons under moonlight. He is arguably one of my favorite characters in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. So... What is it that makes this man so likable? It's because of what defines him. He represents realism. As a captain of treacherous morality, Barbossa was a bedeviling schemer and the ultimate survivor. Ruthless and cunning, combining life experience with reckless daring and fearlessness, he was a true pirate in all aspects. Moving beyond the attributes he possesses, there's something universally relatable, motivation. While it's common for characters to have motivations in movies, what sets apart a character is the audience's engagement with the story, the ability to feel a human element within a villain. For Barbossa, the ultimate goal was to regain his humanity, to experience joy and pleasure as humans do. All he desired was to break the curse afflicting him and his crew, to feel something, acquire a coveted pirate bride, and live out the rest of his days as a prosperous rogue. That's something which the audience can relate to. In Pirates of the Caribbean, at World's End, Barbosa undergoes a significant transformation from a straightforward villain to a multidimensional character. Resurrected in Dead Man's Chest, Barbosa realizes that piracy is on the decline. He sees the East India Trading Company taking over and understands that the pirate era is ending. This makes him think strategically and politically revealing a new side of his character that we hadn't seen before, and it grants us the ability to see that he is more than a brutal villain. Yes, he's still looking out for his best interests, but he's also allowed to grow into a character who is much more political and strategic. He navigates and accepts the major changes happening in the world around him, showcasing a new dimension to his character. In the movie On Stranger Tides, Barbosa takes a further step by abandoning piracy to become a privateer for the king. Unlike some other pirates who resist change, Barbosa willingly adapts, realizing the necessity of evolving with the times. However, true to his nature, his motivations remain self-serving. By double-crossing the king's men to locate the fabled fountain of youth for himself, Barbosa presents himself as a complex character who continues to grow in terms of his intelligence and sharp sense of manipulation. Barbosa rejects the idea that characters can't change. Instead of sticking to the same old villainy, he evolves, showing that motivations can shift and characters can grow. His decision to amputate his own leg to escape Blackbeard's threat adds a layer to his determination to survive, especially after the lengths he went to in order to become mortal in Curse of the Black Pearl, adds another layer to his arc and solidifies his status as someone who is determined to do 
whatever it takes to survive, even if it means harming himself. In Dead Men Tell No Tales, Barbosa undergoes significant emotional development as his backstory unfolds. Here we're given insight into Barbosa's backstory and family when it's revealed that he has a long-lost daughter, Karina. He truly cares for Karina, and although he knows he can't go back in time to be the father she'd always needed and deserved, he's willing to do whatever it takes to make up for it, even choosing to sacrifice his own life to protect his daughters. As a man who prioritizes his life over others and is determined to do whatever it takes to survive, he willingly chooses to sacrifice his life. This marks a profound growth in Barbosa's character, as he prioritizes others' safety over his main pursuits of mortality and treasure hunting, concluding his arc in a surprisingly emotional manner. Throughout the Five Pirates films, Barbosa evolves into a complex character with deep layers. Starting as a selfish and brutal pirate, he transforms into someone with intricate emotions, avoiding typical villain stereotypes. Barbosa emerges as the most compelling and developed character in the franchise, maintaining a sense of freshness even after five films, truly something worth treasuring.